Hey, Paul's Trading Post here. So, I did a flesh and demo on a beaver uh, with the Dexter Beef Skinner. So, I'm going to go ahead and do an otter demo right quick here um, with it. Just kind of show you guys how, how I do a little bit. Whether it's easier for you one way or another, you know that's totally up to you. So, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of this, this way, the way I do it. Um, don't do it this way every single time, but it's my preferred method um, a lot of times when it comes to doing fleshing uh, and jobs and stuff, whatever. So I just, I basically, you know, I got the knife nice and sharp. And so I'm just going to start working down. And even after I use the knife here to get most of it off, I'm still going to go back over it with the, uh, with the actual fleshing draw knife, uh, whatever you want to call it. And and go ahead and finish cleaning everything up. But definitely, um, you know, these otter, I tell you, otter, brown hogs, badger, these things have gristle on them like nobody's business. Um, so I, you know, you gotta, you gotta work all that stuff off if you're scraping them to send them out um and everything me a lot of times what i'll do is if they come into my shop green and i'm going to tan them um i won't even scrape any of this membrane off by hand like this i'll actually uh go ahead throw it in a tanning solution uh overnight maybe a couple days and then i'll pull it back out and i'll run it on my fleshing wheel and by that time the, uh, then it gives the, the uh, chemicals time to penetrate a little bit, kind of uh, kind of stiffen up the hide. It actually kind of stiffens up the meat, kind of stiffens up the skin a little bit. It gives it a whole nother kind of texture. And what that texture does, it allows you to be able to take it off with that fleshing, with that round knife um, a lot better. I got a Dakota 5. There's all kinds of different ones out there personal preferences this just happens to be uh one that i bought locally and it was my second one i've ever owned first big one uh, my first one was a it was the smaller flesher it was a detail flesher i believe they called it, it was a dakota as well but uh it had a little like four or five inch blade on it i don't remember the size now but now um, now i got the uh the full size wheel so, well basically, <clears throat> like I say, just get this knife, knife nice and sharp and everything, uh, and just kind of just do mini strokes. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm pushing down away from me, and I'm also coming like this at the same time. So it's like, it's all in one motion. It's why these blades are sweet, swept like that, so they can, you can make sweeping motions, cutting motions. And you can uh, get through stuff like this. So, uh, just get down right down in there. Um, I want to say too, you know, if, if anybody's out there watching the videos and commenting and stuff like that, uh, I really appreciate that. It's great. Um, I, I, I am, uh, I, I mean, I don't mean to neglect you when you comment or anything. It's just that. Um, being how it's this time of year as it is, uh, I got stuff through the door every day, all the time, nonstop. So, uh, it's just, I try to do one YouTube video a week if I can, um, be able to keep some good content flowing. But my problem is, is, um, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I make the videos and, and everything but sometimes I don't have the time to just run right back on there again and check for comments daily so when I go to check for comments it's usually because I'm making my next video and I'll go through and I'll see that somebody had commented and then I will answer you back so if you don't hear from me in you know a week 10 days or something it just <clears throat> excuse me I mean to get back to you it's just that, uh, like I said, you know, it's it's the busiest time of the year right now for me, uh, right here during the the winter months, and and everybody's bringing in all this green, 
all these green hides to me. So uh, I'm just really trying to just keep up and work, work all these. Uh, we're getting a little dull, so I'm just gonna clean the knife off on here. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to sharpen knives. Uh, sometimes you'll see me go like this. Sometimes you'll see me go like this. Usually if I'm going like this, it means the knife's getting pretty dull. And I'm trying to put, be able to put a little bit more force onto that blade to be able to sharpen it up some more. Um, and then I'll take, I have a work sharp knife sharpener. It's one of those ones with the little belts on it. And when it gets severely dull like that, I'll take it over there to it and I'll run it on the work sharp. Um, you know, you've, you could see all, I don't know if you could see in the picture or not. I got all these knives over here on magnetic uh, strips. There's knives on the other side. There's just knives everywhere when you, when you know, when you got uh, a lot of things coming through and sometimes you get help. And when you get help in here, you want to be able to have different knives. And also there's, uh, you know, you can prefer different knives. You got opening knives. You got like this knife here for, I, I use for fleshing. Um, there's, you know, you got uh, beaver skinning knives. You got your, you got your uh, actual fleshing knife. You got... There's just so much, so much stuff. Um, uh, I normally use a lot of the, the scalpel most of the time. Um, I just showed it in the uh, otter tail video, which these are the same, the same otter as what's in that video there. Uh, I figured, well, while I got it here, I might as well go ahead and follow up with the rest of the videos and finish her up. So, no sense in just, uh, doing one little thing on the otter, making a video, waiting for another otter to come through someday and making another video, just same otter, just different video, different subject on it this time, you know. Um, so uh, the last video was about splitting the tail. And this one here is about fleshing. So we'll get it fleshed down. Like I said, you just gotta keep that knife nice and sharp. Uh, the sharper the better um, oh it, the, some of the other videos I do I recommend a direction of sharpening so uh, a sharpening direction I guess so what you're gonna do on here your top stroke bottom strokes so on your last stroke of your knife as you're sharpening you want it to be your bottom stroke and what that is is that's causing it to go that way so as you're slicing you're cutting away from your piece you go the other way you're cutting into your piece um, so that's just that's just a little bit there that's a little tidbit so here we are at the tail um, I still got a little bit around the front arms to clean up but this is the important thing about that last video about splitting the tail um, nice and flat so it lays flat you come along here with your knife your fleshing blade whatever you start trying to get this fat off of here and and it's almost kind of like beaver tail fat. It's just kind of a little bit grisly. Not quite as bad, but it is. It is grisly. So, but if the tail is laying nice and flat like this, no, you know, we don't have those ridges around them bumps. Here we go. See, look at here. You just take it right on out of there like that. And it just works out real nice and slick like this. So, um, we just get right in there get get right in there and just keep just working right on in right on in go right on down there just lighter pressure towards the tip because you get towards that tip uh, it's a smaller work area so you're so you're putting this if you're still putting the same amount of pressure up here as you are down here you're working in a little narrow area compared to a big area up here you know it's all uh, it's, it's just knife pressure you gotta work with your knife pressure angles make sure you got sharp and right and everything I mean they're just there's a lot of little details you know and stuff that uh, you just learn along the way um, and whatnot so but this is this is kind of the my my method here I said so they get you know it'll get 90 percent of the stuff off of there uh, by using this knife and whatever and and then turn around and we go back and and then we run over it with the flesh and uh, 
uh, flesh and knife here after a little bit. So now we're on to the belly. This is a, I think it's a female. Uh, I did a male earlier. Let me, we'll get down there. And when we get down there, we'll see. Because when you get down there and it's male, there will be a really hard um, cartilage kind of area down there in that area. It's a, uh, you just got to kind of work the knife up underneath there and kind of lift and and uh, so you don't make a hole in it um, yeah this one here not seen anything yet I'm thinking it's a female so yeah we didn't have to worry about that but on the uh, on the males There'll be, yeah, it, there'll be an area here, and it'll be really hard. You, it, it'll be kind of cartilaginous, and you can just get it underneath there a little bit, kind of grab it, lift up, and just kind of move down up underneath there like that, and it'll, it, you'll, you'll take it off. So um, that'll, uh, that'll give you a little heads up there if you get down in that area, and you're, what am I hitting now, kind of thing. So um, I just a little tidbit. So, uh, on these front legs, so when you get up here, these front legs, what I do is, so, uh, let me get this thing straight out. <clears throat> so we come on down in here. Oh, I'm getting a little dull again. Yeah, you do a lot of sharpening when it comes to this kind of thing. I mean, you think about it, you do quite a few quite a few cuts, actually, you know, as you're, as you're scraping and working it. So it, it takes a lot more sharpening. I mean, it's it's all the time. So there we go. Just kind of work my way down in between here. Hope this video doesn't get too long on you guys, because I know watching somebody else kind of do it, you'd be thinking, "Oh man, that's boring." I'm gonna just just get past three quarters of the way of this here and just get straight to the good part and everything well there's little tidbits all along so you get uh get up here and you just pull his little arm down on there like that kind of taunt it pull it a little bit taunt and then you can just kind of work work down like this same thing with raccoons you can get their uh their leg holes or whatever you know up over the end of your beam like that then you can really uh the, you know it really stretches them out straight and you can get in behind here like this and you can just uh get get that stuff removed around there and it's it'll lessen the worry of uh having to poke a hole through it because because you do have it nice and stretched out and tight yeah it's giving me a little trouble now it's camera shy here there we go so get down in there like that. And we'll string, like I said, we'll get we'll get about 90% of it. We'll come back with that flesh and knife and we'll hit it and finish up the rest and everything. So we just I'll work it nice and easy and and uh you know do, doing this you just gotta uh, I've been told a lot of times with this knife here, you're just doing different things and whatever that I'm kind of quick and stuff. And, and I don't know because I don't know anybody else that does it this way. So, um, uh, but I may be, may not be. I'm, <laughs> I'm not claiming anything, that's for sure. I, I'm never, never going to try to claim and try to tell anybody I'm the best at anything because when you do, you, you, you know, you kind of stop learning and and uh i don't want to stop learning so um that's just how how i think about it anyway how it goes so get up in there like that all right got them legs pretty much cleaned up pretty decently so uh over here a little sharpen sharpening
Now this otter here has got his bottom lip on there. I don't ever leave the bottom lip on for myself, but these are customer pieces. So the customer uh, brought these in and the customer wanted me to scrape these down for him. And uh, so he can dry them and have them prepared uh, that way. So um, that's what I'm doing for him. I'm just, uh, I'm just doing the, the cleaning work. He is uh, going to do the drying work and and everything. So uh, he just I don't think he has the the uh, means in his garage to be able to do this. So um, rather than spend the money on that stuff and everything and and do it, he just brings things to me and I get them done for him. And then he's off and going again. Normally, I'd, I'd cut these little ear butts right out of there, too, if I was doing it for myself. I'd, I'd cut them right off and not think about it twice. And uh, same thing with uh, a lot of the times around the lips, front lips and everything. If I'm just tanning it for a wall hanger or something, uh, I will take the fleshing wheel and I will just go ahead and just run, run that stuff right over. Not even worry about it because... What's going to happen is you take that stuff off with a fleshing wheel or a knife or whatever. Then what it does is it thins it down a lot more and allows them chemicals to penetrate quicker and, and work better. And you use a lot less oil that way and stuff as well. Um, tannin oils and everything. It just, to me, it just makes sense to take all that stuff off for uh, tanning wise for if it's just going to be a wall hanger uh, and stuff like that but if uh, you're selling it or whoever the customer is or you're sending it to whoever whatever um, you know I'm gonna do it I'm gonna leave everything on there the way they got it and uh, not touch any of that extra stuff so um, I'm just gonna come in here and just gonna kind of work work this up a little bit on this flat surface cut that off just kind of go around it y'all let me know in the comments if you're watching this stuff too you know what what you guys do what you guys prefer if you ever if you guys take stuff off like this with a knife or not i mean i'd like to know or if you got a channel i'll i'll watch your stuff too i'm I said I always like to learn, so uh, that would be that'd be great with me. Um, take a look. So I'm just gonna clean around this face a little bit. Get up in here above the eyes. Get all this get in here right behind them. There's a little you know, on otters. They have really stiff whiskers, and they. Uh, they got little packs of stiff whiskers all over on their face and stuff, so uh, Don't try and cut them You know, you're gonna have to cut through them a little bit, but don't try and cut them too deep Because then what will happen then down the road is the whiskers will fall out So the face you got a real thick top lip. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna open that up and I'm not gonna open it up in a way that I'm gonna keep cutting the whiskers off you just you you score it really. You kind of come through like this, and you just kind of score it down like that. Oops, about dropped her. So you score, score, come in here, make some scores like that. I'm just gonna come underneath the nose. Open up all this stuff here. Uh, we want it all opened up. So uh, what that's going to do is we're going to cut a little bit off. Uh, and then it will allow this whole, whole face area here to be able to dry uh, better and stuff. So, But but a, a lot of these big chunks right here, I'm, I'm going to go back and take them off. I just don't want to make a my video too, too long when I'm trying to... Uh, talk to you guys about how to 
how to take the meat off down here and go into all the another whole another story on the face and whatnot so anyway that's uh that's kind of like how you'll do there a lot of times taxidermists will do this when they when they tan them in their shop themselves uh because that way the chemicals like i said they can get down in there but you're not losing whiskers and whatever so that'll be that that, that works out really good for uh for the uh, tannery end of it so Anyway, like I said, I'm going to go back over it with the knife. I'm going to finish pushing off a little bit of this fat. I'm going to trim up a little bit of these chunks here on the face. But that's uh, that's pretty much that's, that's the major part of what I do there. So there you go.